All right, guys, it's Philip. It's Toon Tactics TV. It's Newcastle. It's versus West Ham. It's a six pointer when we're talking about the European, uh, the chase for Europe, essentially, the race for Europe that both teams are going through. So let's talk about it. Let's go through the um, team form, static, statistics, and let's give our final prediction at the end. So let's go straight into it. Uh, let me go, put my screen up. All right. So if you guys can see that, this is the, how the form is looking so far for both teams in the last five games. West Ham slightly better. Um, uh, a lot of it is, to, is their journeys into Europe where they fried Freiburg 5-0. Got a decent win against Everton as well and decent draw against Aston Villa. A surprising draw against Burnley. But Newcastle, uh, ex I hate to say it, but you know, losses against Man City and Arsenal you know, are nothing to be ashamed of. What is to be ashamed of is a loss 3-2. Three, three goals conceded against Chelsea. That was deeply disappointing, especially after beating Wolverhampton Wanderers with a very good, uh, keep another clean sheet, three to nothing at St. James's Park. And St. James's Park is where Newcastle's main strengths lie um, in terms of Newcastle's form and performance. I believe we're sixth in the league in terms of I want to say fourth, sixth in the league when it comes to um, home form, a lot lower when it comes to the away form. If you guys can see on the side, this is on foot mob, and this is gonna, this is this kind of gives you a precursor of what of what this match could be. And I've, you can see that Alfonso Riola is ranked a third in terms of safe per match, uh, fourteen goals conceded by uh, West Ham, nine goals con uh, in in goals. Ranked ninth and goals conceded per match as well for West Ham. They haven't been great defensively. Um, Trippy, obviously, big chance creator. Martin Dubravka, number one for saves per match, which is, uh, you know, wow. Newcastle, fifth in goals scored. So Newcastle score a lot of goals and fortunately they concede a lot of goals and, and create a lot of big chances as well. So you guys will see that heads, some there on the heads, heads. I won't, I won't stand it for too long, but it's pretty tight. Um, They've won 4-2, 1-5-1. The rest of them draws. Pretty, pretty tight. Home and away for both teams, really. Um, head to head, 12 wins for Newcastle, 6 for West Ham, 6 draws overall. Look, you guys already know about the injury history. You already know we've got like 12 players out. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I keep going on about the, the Newcastle injuries are awful. Obviously, Sven Botman's out until January 2025. Oh, my word. And West Ham, three players up, but of those two are very, very um, important to them. In Mohamed Kudos and Edson Alvarez has been quite good this year for them. I think I think his first year in, in the Premier League as well. Mohamed Kudos got a wonder goal in Europe for them as well. Loves to run up players, which is what the Newcastle team hates. It hates players that can carry the ball against them. And the fact that Kudos is not playing is of great benefit to them. Now, this is the... The, I'm going to go into this a bit later. This is the um, the lineup that Fontmore has predicted. Whoop, got a little text. What's up there? The um, what I want to talk about first, and I, I wish I had split screens because because then I could show what West Ham's one is, um, where Newcastle are in terms of Fontmore ratings and in, in various guises. So yes, Newcastle are tenth in the Premier League. But somehow Fort Mob still rates us. Uh, you might, well, some people might think somehow Fort Mob still rates us as the sixth team um, in, 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 in the league. And the reason why Fort Mob does that is it, it doesn't tell its full algorithm, but it talks about player statistics, player um, overall ratings, as well as um, other metrics, goal scored per match, uh, goals conceded, all those type of things that you would see why Newcastle, or even though we're, we're 10th in the league, We've got seven, we're ranked sixth in terms of football Brayton. So I have, I won't lie to you guys, I have a small hope inside of me um, that in these last 10 games, those underlying metrics will pull through for Newcastle and we'll end up in a, well, hopefully sixth, but um, at least in the European spot. So without further ado, we're sixth in the football, football Brayton's. West Ham, I think, on eighth or ninth, if I can remember correctly. Um, we're, West Ham are pretty low in terms of goals per scored per match. Newcastle fifth again in the top six again. But this is where it gets bad. Goals conceded 12th. I think New West Ham are 14th. So that's interesting. 
Um, it's a, it, it, we talked previously about why Newcastle's... We're going to go why Newcastle's uh, concede so much goals. Yes, it's the defence, but there's a, there's a little bit to it as well. Eighth in terms of position, uh, average possession. We're fourth in terms of cleaning sheets. And you hear the surprise of my voice because... <laughs> We haven't been defensively as sound as Liverpool or Arsenal, and the goals conceded shows that. So the fact that we've got eight clean sheets is remarkable. Um, uh, fifth in terms of expected goals. So again, we're a creative force. We create, we create chances. We create, we score a lot of goals. We convert a lot of chances as well. That is not Newcastle's problem. Newcastle's problem is on the defensive end. Again, shots per match seventh, big chance created second. Only behind Liverpool, ahead of Man City, which is insane. Big chances missed. Eighth, I I think partly why we're eighth is because we're so good in terms of uh, shots converted. Um, uh, that's my take on it. Uh, accurate passes can also improve. Uh, the other statistics I really, really wanted to focus on is, and it's beginning to get here, touches in the opposition box. And bef when we, if you guys remember when I started, when I was in the early part of the season, we were a lot higher than this. We were, we were in fifth, sixth, uh, fourth places in terms of touches uh, in the opposition box because of a high pressing. And once the injuries took their toll, the squad rotation got limited, the energy and the legs were going, we were not able to uh, press as high and we were not spending as much time in the opposition box. But what we do have, obviously, in the guy in in, in Isak and Gordon, is people that can run at people. But it's not. But, but we've been dropping. We've been dropping in terms of our touches and box. There's other things that have been dropping as well. And this is where it gets. This is where we get uh, talking to start talking about our why we've been um, conceding so many chance um, uh, goals, interceptions per match. We're 18. I could, I, we're 18th in, in, in tackles made in interceptions and our, our, when, when you're a high press inside and you can't and you're 18th in interceptions this is what opens you up this is what leaves the gaps between forward and midfield midfield and defence and we're just carved open so easily our midfield without Joe Linton and obviously Willock is back but without Joe Linton and, and, and Willock and and others that were uh, uh, it's those two particularly, and obviously Tanali, but Joe Willock and Joe Linton in particular. Our mid, we, the, that connection between midfield and attack has left so many spaces, and this has allowed teams to exploit us. And you guys remember the game at home to Nottingham Forest, and where uh, Chris we made Chris Wood look like prime Van Nistelrooy because we left so much space. It was insane. And when your interceptions are low, like I said, and you're and you're not tackling and you're trying to press, you lose games. And when we're talking about West Ham, who are primarily, primarily a counter-attacking team, there is cause for concern. The two things that give me a little bit of hope is in terms of that, though, for West Ham, is if Kudos isn't playing, who can carry the ball, that leaves them only with Paqueta, who's not bad by himself. And the other thing is that um also, that there was one more thing I wanted to ask, I wanted to say about that, and I'll get back to it. Successful tackles per match were thirteenth below. Below, it, it, it's horrible. And I know you guys can see Everton second there. That's because they def just like West Ham actually, not too far. Being uh, being teams that play low blocks, you make a lot of tackles. But we're not a low block team. We're not a counter playing team. Mainly, we're a higher pressing team who aren't making the tackles and are leaving ourselves open and leaving ourselves exposed. Um, and this again, possession one in the final third. We're eleventh. We're below mid table. And when we're looking into the final ten games, not just in this game, but okay, we'll focus on this game. But in the wider thought of it, there's so much. That, you know, when you're not making tackles, you're running out of legs. How long can you play, play, play high press and football? However, if you guys remember the game against Wolves and um, Eddie Howe's really, really good tactics, which is that give Wolves the ball. And Newcastle were the counter-attacking team and we smashed them 3-0. We forgot, we didn't do that against Chelsea and then we started higher press and then we lost 3-2. 
And that's the difference. And when we're going to go back to the main, to the teams and talk a little bit more of the tactics, I'm going to press on that point and uh, in terms of talking tactics for the game itself. And that's, and as I said, and I've said that, that's where we're going right now. When we're talking about this particular game, Newcastle, West Ham, New, uh, West Ham, obviously, are, um, are, where are you guys? You guys are eighth or seventh. West Ham are seventh, four points ahead of us. If they win this game, the seven points, the, 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 that's a seven point swing would have to overcome within nine games. It would be, it would be very difficult for Newcastle to claw back. It's, this game's got a lot of high stakes in it for Newcastle, for Eddie Howe, for the fans. We've got to get into Europe. I don't care if it's Europe or Conference or Europa League. It's important. Going back to what I was talking about, where Eddie Howe, uh, in terms of tactics, we're going to have most of the possession. We are going to create more of the big chances. Um, we are going to have more shots on target. Um, we've got the better quality players on the ball. I know they've got um, Paqueta, but aside from Paqueta and Gerard Bowen, who's also been on fire, excuse me, uh, 14 goals and three assists, has been on fire. Amazing. He's not that much of a dribbler, though. I, I saw him statistically. He's, he's not, he, he can dribble, obviously, but not as much as I thought he was. Their main dribbler is Kudos. And if he doesn't play... And if he's not able to play, play and Kudos is really the equivalent of Cunha for Wolves, and Cunha wasn't playing for Wolves, and they missed him a lot. They missed him tremendously. I know they've got Antonio, but Antonio um, hasn't been on form lately, and I believe Lascelles can match himself up against him so long as he concentrates and does well. Um, so does Eddie Howe employ the tactics that he used against Wolves, for instance, where he gave Wolves the ball and Wolves had to try and dictate the play and press, and when they did, and then they... And, and they left space in behind. We just took the ball and we pounced on them using Gordon's pace, um, using Isak's pace. Even Bruno, if you guys remember, for the first or second goal, did that lung bursting run, took the shot that deflect that the goalkeeper saved, but the ball bounced up and Isak scored. Can Newcastle use that against West Ham or would Moyes be a bit? Uh, I imagine Moyes, with all these years of experience, might be a bit. Um, uh, he would see it. Oh, guys, you can't see my... Um, let me shift. Let me go to the tactics board for you guys. You guys can't see this on my screen. So, would Moyes use those type of tactics? So, would Moyes be... Uh, would he kind of suss it out? The other thing I was thinking about was, well, with, with us being in Dubai, international break for the last two weeks, I know not every player was there. We've got a lot of players in international break, but he had Willock with him. He also had Alfie Harrison with him as well, which is an interesting one, as you guys would have saw. So he had the team with him and he and, and he had time to work on tactics. And what do you think, with Will having Willock with him, Gordon Isak, does he think to himself, do you know what? We're at home. We can press them. We can go at them. I know what happened against Chelsea. Could be could be down to tiredness. Could, could be down to lack of rest. We're going to go at them and we can win. I wonder if uh, Hal is in two minds there. What would I do if I was Hal? Ha, ah, man. I would be thinking about winning the game. And you've had Gomez off, Isak off on international break, Gordon as well. Um, do, you, do, do you still have the legs? in your team to press up high. He'd have to choose his moments. He'd have to choose his moments of when Newcastle um, give the ball to West Ham and when Newcastle essentially take control. Can he do that effectively and manage the game? Can he get keep Gomez on the ball and dictate the play? Can he ensure that Almiron, for instance, as you guys can see, just hassles and parries uh, Paqueta and Longstaff and all those guys keep Paqueta away from Newcastle's goal, away from dictating the play. That's going to be the key. Um, all in all, I back Newcastle to win this game. I back Newcastle to win this game 2-0. And partly why I say that, and I, I say that is because I look at where I think I think Newcastle, I think, I think Newcastle can have the better quality of players. I think we can 
I think Calvin, if I look at West Ham's midfield of Calvin Phillips and Suche, particularly Calvin Phillips, who's lacking in quality, we can press on him. Ward is excellent with his free kicks and ha has been assisting, but he's not an athlete. Um, and we can take advantage of that. Isak has been firing. Almiron can be his energetic best and just he can keep Paqueta at bay to some degree. I'm sure of it. And so I back Newcastle United to win this game 2-0. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think I'm deluded? Do you think, you know what, West Ham could really, really hurt us? You're kind of underestimating them. Paqueta, Mikel Antonio, Gerard Bowen, they can really, really hurt us. What if Kudos, what if Kudos plays? Um, that could affect us. That could impact us. Um, let me know. Share your thoughts. Um, what, what What is your score predictions? I'm, I'm more than willing to hear them and uh, we'll see what pans out at after at, by the time the game finishes about what, 1.30, 2 o'clock on a Saturday. And until then, guys, guys, remember to like, share and subscribe and take care and God bless.